Hey, this is MJ, call sign KW3KW, and welcome to another episode of Ham Radio Made Simple. Today I'm going to be doing a three-part series on uh, ham radio with remote desktop access. Uh, this is episode number 36, and it's, again, a three-part series. Part one, I'm going to show you how to do remote desktop for your HF digital apps. If, if you want others to uh, stumble across this station a little easier, please hit the like and the subscribe buttons, uh, not for my benefit, but for other people who may find this content valuable. So I have a goal, and it was to have remote access uh, from a different uh, desktop to be able to have full functionality uh, for my HF digital apps, such as JSA Call. My, uh, I have full rig controls on both my IC7300 and my FT891 as well as be able to change from a remote desktop my three outside antennas. So if you look at my normal desktop PC, which is up in my shack on the third floor, uh, this is in the attic, this is what you would see. By accessing, uh, and again, I'll show you how to do this remote desktop, I can access that same desktop and be able to control it as if I was sitting in my seat in my shack. In this three-part series, I'll kind of break down what each of these videos I'm going to cover about so you know whether or not you want to invest your time in this. But today is going to be part one, remote desktop. I'll talk about Wi-Fi, uh, access only, no internet, uh, using the Windows remote desktop. I'll get into the internet only option, and I'll show you the one that I'm using, which is the Iperius remote. Uh, and I can access, again, uh, full des desktop here uh, via the internet. Uh, the next video is going to be how do I control my rig remotely. And this is the N4 PY software because I'm using this so that I can do tuning, power adjustments, viewable meters. And this whole series is focused on data mode so that you can, you know, do JS, JSA call, uh, FL Digi, uh, VARA AC, the different apps that are out there and uh, do it all remotely. Um, I want to also make sure I can do my ALC adjustments for those who know data, how critical that is. Uh, rigs that I'm using for this software is the ICOM I7, IC7300 and the ASU FT891. And I'll go over some other software options that are out there, but this is the one I, I chose. Uh, the third part is remote antenna switching. Uh, it, uh, up until recently, I had to go up and down several flights of stairs outside, open my box, and flip a switch uh, outside and go back up. And now I can do all that inside. So whether it be my vertical Comet CHA250, my NFED half-wave sloper antenna, my off-center-fed dipole, all I have to do now is just basically on the desktop, click a button here. And again, remotely, I'm switching uh, my antennas, even if I'm in another state or another location, or just even in my own home. I don't have to go outside anymore. So today I'm going to go over what is remote access. Um, I'll talk about uh, Wi-Fi access that's different than internet access and why you might want to use one over the other um, or use both like I do. Uh, I'll actually even get in to show you how you can remotely, not <laughs> being on the same site, turn on and off your PC and your rig without having to have someone turn it on and off for you, which it, most of the time that's what everyone's doing. But there are ways now you can do that. So if you're traveling and you want to turn on your PC and your rig remotely, you can do it, and it's not that complicated. And then I'll give a summary of, of my uh, health update. So uh, let's get started. Here is my finished attic. Here's my shack. I have JS8 open here, JS8 spotter, uh, my ICOM 7300. Uh, you can see here is the antenna switching uh, box, uh, which is part three. I'll get into the RAAS-4. This is four port. They have an eight port antenna switching box also, which is a kit that you build. Uh, my Anytone uh, uh, 578 uh, is right in here. But I want to access this from anywhere uh, and be able to do the rig controls and switch the antennas. And that's all doable. So what I do in here is my... Uh, wife's uh, on the first floor here, her office, I can use a remote desktop, for example. This is the login. And by logging in through remote desktop, I'm now pulling up my screen 
which you see in here. So this is my third floor uh, screen, and it's just like I'm sitting at, at my shack, being able to open up everything that I need to do in here. So this is my re remote desktop view. Uh, what you're seeing here is the uh, N4 PY app for my ICOM with full rig control. And again, that's part two, and I'll get into that. Here is the JS8 full functions. It's just like I'm sitting at my desk. I'm doing JS8. I can hit the tune function. I can adjust my ALC now. Uh, I can go into Windows sound settings if I have to up on my uh, third floor uh, computer. Uh, it has to total complete control. And uh, this is my antenna switch user interface. So if I want to go to my off-center fed dipole versus my end fed or go to my vertical, I can actually just click on the button there and it automatically switches. So uh, this is exactly what I wanted. It took me a while to figure this out, but I'm going to share everything I've learned with this and hopefully it'll make a short learning curve for you. One of the options I like is using the local network, which is just my Wi-Fi. And this is where I use the Windows remote desktop setting. And so I get the privacy of uh, you know, being behind the firewall of my router. So it does not require internet access. And anywhere that my Wi-Fi works, which is usually like my backyard, uh, upstairs, downstairs, it all works really, really well. So um, <clears throat> what I'm doing, though, is I'm fine. I'm, I'm using the public Wi-Fi, excuse me, my private Wi-Fi, not a public Wi-Fi in this case. But in order to use the Windows Remote Desktop, it does require that you have the Windows 10 Professional or Windows 11 Professional Edition. I did not, and I had to upgrade. And if you go to Microsoft's uh, site to get the upgraded license, it's about $99 per license. Uh, but I shopped around and found the places that offered the license for $23. I did my due diligence, you know, looked at them to find out if they were legit and, uh, you know, and, and will they continue to operate through the next Microsoft major upgrade that they do on your, you know, uh, updates. Sometimes if you get some of these licenses when they do the update, then it kicks it off. It says it's not a legitimate license. So, again, buyer beware on this. Um, so to do the 10, to go from the home edition to the professional edition, whether it was Windows 10 or Windows 11, was a pretty simple process to do the upgrade. It wasn't a heavy lift as I thought, and I have a document that goes through all of the steps. But you need to go to uh, the Windows uh, settings system about, and this is where you're going to find, for example, up in here, you're going to find the, the name of the, the PC, again, device name. This is Windows uh, 11 now, it would, says uh, Windows 11 Home before. And this is a great place to get the information that you're going to need to fill in. So if you look at, um, uh, again, the cost to do it, it's not cheap. But um, again, because I shopped around, I found better pricing for licenses. It was affordable to me. So I, I'll spare you having to do the learning curve and just ask, ask for the upgraded handout for Windows 10 or 11, and I'll send it to you. And this is what it looks like. I walk you through step by step. Uh, all the way, just like my other handouts that I do. So uh, when we talk about the remote desktop connection here, this is what it's going to look like. This is the Windows remote desktop, and it's pretty simple. Uh, it's like just like you're operating at your base station. You can open and close apps. You can change settings. You can change the Windows sound settings, device manager, browse the Internet, file transfer, full functionality when you use this. Now, not all... When you use the internet, not all remote desktop settings allow for all of these functions. So make sure that you always do your homework when you're looking. I'll show you the one that I use, and it does a lot of this already in here. But it's pretty simple to do. So uh, I just opened my remote desktop that you see right in here. Uh, no internet access required. This is where I use the private Wi-Fi router. Uh, and again, the requirements is that my, I have to first set up remote desktop access. And again, I have a handout and I go through all of that of how to do it. Uh, I need the name of the PC. I need the usernames for all of this to go in. If you want to go past the, your home base, your shack area, then you need to do Internet access. And anywhere in the world now, you have access to your shack and able to access your applications. But is it safe? And uh, the thing you need to look for, the, the choice that you choose, is it encrypted and what type of encryption are they using? Because uh, you don't want to have uh, any kind of sensitive data get intercepted. 
Um, does it have strong passwords uh, requirements? And uh, is it some of them will actually do multi-factor authentication? And again, a lot of this you have to understand comes from uh, corporations uh, who are trying to service their remote workers, and they want to make sure that no one's stealing and getting access into their own servers. So this is what you're going to see when you think of us. You know, the one-offs for ham radio operations. Is it as critical? Not not nearly as critical as it is when you're dealing with corporations and, and their access to their servers. Um, but you need to know like each computer's ID, the username and passwords. And here's an example of some multiple ones that are out there. You got Zoho Assist, uh, w which I, they say is free. I think a lot of these are like free trials in here, but this shows you here 256-bit um, uh, encryption, uh, SSL, single socket layer, um, none on some of them, 256. So make sure you do your due diligence on the ones that you're choosing. What type of en encryption and authentication are they using in here? Now, like any desk here, it's like it's $15 a month, even for a single user. So there are free options that are out there, and there's a lot of choices. And usually when you get a free version, it's a single user license, and it's a light version. It doesn't include, like, remote Windows desktop, where you have full functionality uh, from one PC to the other. So <clears throat> be aware a lot of these are free based on a, a trial period, so there's pricing involved. And again, there's just a, a lot of different ones that are out there, and this is just a small sample. So when you look at some of the software options that are, are worth looking at, one is the Google Chrome Remote Desktop. Um, it's, it's free, and it's pretty good. I'm just not a Google fan. I just don't like them giving access to my computer, my personal preference. But as far as uh, functionality and stuff and the cost, uh, reliable, it's a, it's a good choice. Rust Desk is a very popular one. It's open source. Uh, you can have any location with the internet wherever you want. Um, theirs is free also, full desktop access. However, here's the kicker. It's always in the fine print. They use a rendezvous, rendezvous server in China. Anything with China, to me, I just, the flags and alarms go off. Uh, I just don't trust them that they're going to be honest and say, okay, we're not going to access the data on your, on your system when you're not looking. So, uh, but you can route it through a self-hosted server if you're more tech savvy. And it's a great choice then uh, if you want to do it, but I would only do it if you know how to set up a self-hosted server. And information will be in the links. I'll show you a lot of the stuff that you can look. And they give you good information on how to do set up for, for the self-hosting. Now, for me, the one I chose was Iperius Remote. And again, um, this is pretty nice in the sense it's a free-based app, full desktop, end-to-end -end encryption that they have. I really don't know how, how good that is compared to 256-bit, but... For what I'm using it for, uh, just for my um, ham radio stuff, it, it, it's really good. Uh, now, the question is, some of these software, do, do they that are free, do they have time limits for a single user on it? So if I wanted to leave this all day, is it am I able to do it so far? I haven't found it to be an issue, but it might be. So again, another one of those in the fine print, but they don't mention uh, about what the time limits are on, on using it for consecutive uh, minutes in a row or hours in a row. So things that you must know is each computer's ID, username, and password. Simple as that. I kind of blocked out over here. And I use this. This is the one that I use. It's free. It's not commercial. Uh, <clears throat> and it works well for what I'm trying to use it for. I'll put in the comments the ones that you guys like and uh, uh, and any kind of links so, so someone else can look it up. And again, this is not the best one to look for. It's the one that I found that works for me. The, one of the things I've stumbled across just recently while I was putting this together was the ability to remotely turn on my PC and turn it off, as well as turn my rig on and off without having to be or have someone else do it for me here. So um, I have a dedicated PC with no personal information on it that, again, as I'm doing the piloting on, on this one, to make sure no one can turn it on and off when I'm not around. Um, but anyhow, just to keep it safe, I'm, I'm isolating this. Anyhow, I use what is known as a switch bot. You can get it on Amazon. 
and it's a little uh, bot right in here that has a um, a little button that can go up and down on your power button on your PC. So think of your this is your you know personal computer, and this is sitting and it's kind of with an adhesive on it stays permanently on it, and when you activate it, it pushes down and turns the button on. So this is how you you actually have someone there to push the button on your power button automatically. You can set it up on a timer or you can actually do it on de on demand as to what you want to do. And so uh, I used a smart plug uh, like this also uh, for the rig. So what I'm doing is taking the smart plug, which is basically a high tech timer switch. Same thing, you know, when it hits a certain time of the day, your lights would go on. Well, it can go on at a certain time or on demand through the application here, providing, again, this is all that you have access to, to the Internet. The Internet is working. Uh, so far, it looks like the total cost is $50. I'll know more about it uh, later and may do a video based on uh, your feedback if you want me to spend time, uh, do a deeper dive on this. So when I'm looking at how to turn the rig on and off, I'm using the smart plug. And essentially what I'm doing is I'm turning on the power on my um, here, just leaving this button on on my power supply. So this is plugged into here and it's plugged into my backup power unit. And what I do is um, I leave the, the rig power button on. So this is on, this is on, and I don't turn the power button off on the rig. I don't turn the power button off here. This is now the new on and off. If this is in this mode, you may check it with your rig. I found that when my power supply is in here is on, uh, and then I turn it off, and this has been on, it turns it off. But if I turn this back on, it, the rig is on as long as the last time it was in the on position. So again, something you may want to try, just try turning on your rig and then shutting this off and see if you can turn the rig on and off up at the power supply level. If you can, then this works. So uh, rig goes on and off via the power supply control now. So this is my switch which is pretty cheap, you know, to be able to do it uh, and access and have this go on and off, uh, again, as long as the Internet's working via your phone. So if you want any of my handouts, you can get them at kw3kw at mail.com. And my handouts include on it the Windows 10 and 11 Pro upgrade, the Iperia setup for the Internet, which you can see, what again, this is an example of my handouts. Those are used to looking at my handouts are used to a very graphical user interface uh, type of teaching method, and that's what I do, show you exactly what to push, what to hit with notes. Um, I have a Windows uh, remote desktop setup guide too, so it should get everything to get you started, but again, be specific. So in summary, you can just do a Wi-Fi only through Windows desktop, and you have to have the professional version, remote desktop that is. And then you can also do the internet through de remote desktop apps such as uh, uh, Google Chrome, Windows Remote Desktop, iPerius is which I use, uh, which is free. Um, again, if you ask for the handouts, be specific as to what you're asking for. Now, as far as my health update, my neuro is no change. I really still struggle trying to concentrate and, and speak, as, as if, you, if you can tell. Um, I get tired real quickly, too. Um, I've, since then, I've had three heart stents put in because I had 99% blockage in my left ascending uh, uh, ventricle. Um, they still can't figure out why I'm having difficult breathing and I have constant fatigue and I'm worn out before the end of the day. So uh, I would ask if someone was saying this, did you get the jab? And the answer is I, I did not because a lot of studies are now pointing to the fact that the, the shot was um, indicative of, of, of post complications later on. Um, but forgive me for not being at the same level as earlier in my videos. And again, I thank you for your prayers and your concern and your nice, uh, encouraging comments. So thank you all. So the next video is going to be part two, remote rig control software. Uh, part three will be remote antenna switching. Um, maybe do some short videos on troubleshooting some HF digital apps. I find there's some common simple areas that people need to pay attention to. So again, uh, this is MJ KW3 KW with Ham Radio Made Simple. Thanking you for hitting the like and the subscribe buttons. Uh, until next time, out.